You have spoken with whistleblowers. You have spoken, you also spoke with an informant who gave you all of this information. Where is that informant today? Where are these whistleblowers? Well, unfortunately, uh, we can't track down the informant. Uh, we're hopeful that the informant is still there. The whistleblower knows the informant. The whistleblower is very credible. Mm. Well, James Comer, who's a part of uh, the uh, the Republicans' investigations, the Biden family and all their financial crimes and getting money from uh, outside countries and apparently doing the bidding of those countries. He's finally come to a whole point here. Well, all of his points have come to womp womps. Maybe this one is just another one of those. Uh, Bartiromo couldn't believe what she heard there when he said they lost their informant and whistleblower. Say what? Let's listen to what she had to say. Hold on a second, Congressman. Did you just say that the whistleblower or the informant is now missing? Well, we, we're hopeful that we could find the informant. Now remember, these informants are, are kind of in the, the spy business. So uh, they don't make a habit of uh, being seen a lot or, or being high profile or anything like that. Uh, we have basic information with respect to what the informant has alleged, and it's very serious. So we lost the informant somehow, the informant that was blowing the whole lid off of this whole thing. But still, we've got all this information available, and still, Maria Bartiromo couldn't believe it. She believes everything else that generally happens, but then since when it comes on her show and tells her. But since this is now the thing, she can't believe how incompetent this could be. The clown car continues to just have people piling out of it. She can't believe it, but there's a, a way that they can go about spinning this though. So now, so the informant is missing that probably never existed. This is how they then twist this into the more nefarious behavior behind the Biden administration. Let's watch more. Are there whistleblowers or informants missing right now? Well, with, with, with what we've investigated and the people that we've tracked down, uh, going back to the CEFC, uh, the two main players in that business, as well as all the Americans that were involved in the uh, different Biden uh, influence peddling schemes, as well as the Serbian national, uh, the nine of the 10 people uh, that we've identified that have very good knowledge with respect to the Bidens, they're, they're one of three things. Maria, they're either currently in court, they're currently in jail, or they're currently missing. So it's of the utmost importance that the FBI work with us. Uh, this is absolutely extraordinary and it is stunning that some people are missing, that you need to prove this. Who in the White House is intimidating these people, do you know? I do know, uh, we're saving that for a later time. But I can tell you one thing that a lot of people don't know. Oh my God, you've got people in the White House that you know have been purposely influencing folks, offing whistleblowers and informants. And James Comer is gonna wait on that information. I want you to think for three seconds about how much sense that makes. James Comer came out last week on Wednesday and had this whole judgment day thing, which I'm gonna get to as well, as far as the Bidens. And now that he's got apparently more information and these whistleblowers turn up missing, the informants are missing, there's none of them around. And he's gonna hold on to that information to a later date. What later date and why? Did she ask him any of those questions? Hell no, Burbank, she asked him none of those questions. The whole point is to first turn this clown car thing into then a conspiracy theory about what the Bidens have done to his informants. Yeah, when she's asking about like, where's the whistleblower now? It's giving uh, his response, like, oh, I, I have a girlfriend, she just goes to another school. <laughs> oh, whistleblowers and informants, but they're just very secretive. You know, they like their privacy, they, like their, they keep a low profile. And then when she asks, are they lost? And he says, well, I hope we find them. <laughs> So yes, they are missing. It's like asking, are you failing your class right now? Well, I hope I pass the class. It's like that doesn't answer the question. And it's Absolutely obvious not. he's constructing a narrative by giving as little information as possible and just hinting that there might be a whistleblower telling us some stuff that really fits what we'd like to take action on next. It's so obvious. And even those things that they've told us or had all these breaking news on and press conferences and in hearings and everything on, still are producing nothing but speculation that of course, he says this random nobody whistleblower is confirming all the things that I've been saying to you guys. But again, 
I mentioned how last week he came out with this. He's gonna have some concrete information. This is him promising that on just, I wanna give you guys the full scope of how clownish James Comer is. Cuz I've been ignoring all this nonsense, seeing little bits and pieces. But I wanna show you guys what he's been up to. This is what he said on Tuesday before he came out with Judgment Day. What can you tell us, Congressman, about what you're gonna be showcasing tomorrow? Well, tomorrow, for the first time, the American people are gonna see actual bank records that show wire transfers from uh, adversaries around the world into a web of LLCs that were owned or controlled by the Bidens. And then those transfers were made back into the Biden family accounts. So I think tomorrow is gonna be judgment day for the Biden administration, the Biden White House, and I'm anxious to see how the mainstream media covers this. <laughs> Congressman, do any of those bank records show cash going directly into Joe Biden's bank account? Well, you'll see tomorrow, Jesse, they set this up uh, to be as complicated as possible. Have you guys heard of James Comer answer a question yet? These are Fox News folks asking him yes or no questions. So are the informants off? Well, uh, and also, are we gonna see Judgment Day tomorrow? Well, and it's always around the same thing. You guys heard that T-Mobile commercial, at and one of them? They go, well, 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 because they don't wanna actually answer the question because they don't have an answer for it. How was that Judgment Day turnout, by the way? De La Beast talked about it. It was publicized as Judgment Day for Biden. And the conference ultimately proved anticlimactic, largely consisting of Comer throwing around vague, unsubstantiated accusations and failing to link the president to any of these relatives alleged, quote, influence peddling that they've been talking about. The report itself does not substantiate these claims or implicate Mr. Biden. It does not allege illegal conduct either. The report does not show payments to Mr. Biden. Neither does it provide explicit evidence to back up the Republican lawmaker's central claim that the business dealings influenced Mr. Biden. Lastly, Mr. Comer and his colleagues stopped short of alleging legal activity. I wonder why. And the White House then called those findings baseless innuendo. This is the st uh, stage here. It's of course designed to make people think something's going on that they have absolutely no evidence of. And if that is going on, I'm sure they'd be providing that evidence. I would look forward to that evidence. But that's not really what they're in the business of doing. They're in the business of sowing some kind of doubt in people's heads. No, that's exactly where I want to go next, Jair. It's like her face and the dramatics and also Jesse Waters too. The way they ask the questions, they're like, so are you saying informants are missing? <laughs> it's like this is almost a soap opera or something. The dramatics are so extensive. The fact that people can watch this and think that this is objective news meant to inform is insane to me. How can that make sense in your head when you see how she looks into the barrel of the camera? <laughs> and then of course you have London Roberts case in Arkansas. So Hunter Biden's mother of child suing. Well, it was a case Hunter Biden brought to court to have the payments lower. And now London Roberts has an attorney where it's the same attorney that worked for the Trump administration in Wisconsin, right? During the post election election fraud cases. So these are people that were suing to have ballots discounted in Wisconsin. Now they represent Hunter Biden's baby mother in a case where they have to sift through Hunter Biden's finances. It's just absolutely insane the extent to which the right will go to get this information about the Bidens. So if anything comes out of this, I think it's gonna be out of that court case. And this mystery informant, I wouldn't be surprised if it was London Roberts lawyers just leaking stuff that was not meant to be made public found during that case. Anything to sow a little bit of doubt, but then of course cover that last part up.